Canto 1 The Grief of Arjuna The blind emperor Dhritarashtra asked the oracle, gathered together in Kurukshetra to battle, assembled eagerly to prove their mettle. The Pandavas and my Kauravas poised for a fight. O oh, Sanjay, what happened there? Share your divine sight. Sanjay replied, Seeing the Pandavan army approaching, King Duryodhana then began speaking. His teacher's attention he sought to invoke to Dronacharya. The following words he spoke, O oh, Acharya, behold and cast your glance at the Pandavan army's battle stance. The sons of Pandu and Drupad have thus arrayed See the battle formation that they have arranged. Here stand in the battlefield the mighty warriors, the great military heroes and archers. To Arjuna and Bhima, they are equal in skill and might. Yuyudhana, Virat and Chief Drupad are all ready to fight. Along with them are also lined the valiant Drishtaketu, the king of Kashi and Chekitin, and the most brave amongst men, Purujit, Kuntibhoj and Shaivya, all warriors brilliant. Uttamauja the strong and the achiever Yudhamanyu, the son of Subhadra, the young Abhimanyu, also marshalled are Draupadi's five warrior sons, all exemplary generals in their own bastions. O best amongst Brahmins, let me now confide and introduce the great warriors standing on our side, the prominent amongst the generals and leaders who stand ground to lead our armed warriors. Yourself, the mighty grandfather Bhishma, Karna and the undefeated Acharya Kripa, each greatest amongst masters matched by none, also are Ashwatthama, Vikarna and Somadatta's son. Many other great ones have come to partake, sacrificing their lives to battle for my sake. The advanced specialists of all forms of weapons have come to battle, all of them victors and veterans. With Bhishma as guardian, our army is unmatchable, peerless in combat and looks highly unbeatable. As against the army that Bhima has guarded, his side appears less formidable and limited. And so to all of you, I thus request and ask to perform this singular and important task. Stand your ground during the battle and protect the reverend Bhishma, whom we so respect. Grandsire Bhishma, the Kuru clan's eldest, whose very presence enthused even the strongest. Like a king lion, he sent out the fiercest roar, and the sound of his battle conch sparked a furore. Next echoed cymbals, conches, and kuru drums, and all the horns, trumpets, and kettle drums, all at once in a singular, cohesive sound, and their noise proliferated a tumult around. Then, in a magnificent chariot, drawn by horses white, Arjuna and Krishna came into my sight. Both sounded together, their conscious divine, seated in their vehicle, splendid and fine. Sri Krishna, his God-gifted Panchajanya, and Arjuna, the divine conch Devadatta, and then the most fearsome Pandava, Bhima, blew the mighty Poundra. And then Kunti's son, King Yudhishthira, sounded his conch, Ananta Vijaya, and the brothers Nakul and Sahadev, respectively, Sughosha and Manipushpaka, King of Kashi, Master Archer and War Chief Shikhandi, Drishtadyumna, Virat, and the undefeated Satyaki, Drupad, mighty Abhimanyu, and Draupadi's all sons. O King, from all directions, their conches bellowed at once. The call of the conches sunk deep into the Kauravan hearts, sending a ripple of fear even in their greatest stalwarts. So fearsome a shudder spread through the ground, even the mighty skies reverberated the terrible sound. Observing the Kauravan combative stance, Arjuna, whose chariot bore the flag of the legendary Anjaneya, ready to battle by raising and lifting his divine bow, and equipped his quiver with deadly arrows to let go. O King, then to the divine charioteer Krishna, the following words were spoken by Arjuna. Between the two armies I request you to take our chariot into the battlefield center for my sake. Unless this war field I closely observe and see, 
those who desire to wage the battle against me. I cannot assess the warrior's strength and might and decide the opponents who are worthy to fight. All those who have thus gathered here, I wish to see all the warriors from near, the alliance of well-wishers that has combined to support the cause of Duryodhana's false mind. Sanjaya spoke, O Emperor, as per the words of Arjuna, that were uttered to the divine Krishna, who then drove their chariot magnificent in between the two armies that were present, facing Bhishma and Dronacharya, the commanders, and all the other kings and all the mighty leaders, the following words escaped the lips of Krishna. These are the Kurus you seek to battle. See, O Arjuna. Thus present there, Arjuna watched all his foes, his own uncles and grandfathers who were close, teachers and relatives and his dearest brothers, children, nephews and friends amongst elders and his most beloved ones and in-laws too. In both armies he saw as he stood between the two. Arjuna noticed all those gathered to war, every one of them who had come to spar, despondent and overcome by compassion. A distraught Arjuna spoke in this fashion, O oh Krishna, my own kin stand here in my sight, all together and filled with a desire to fight. Watching them, my heart gives a cold sigh, and my throat feels also parched and dry. Down my spine now runs a shiver that makes my whole body shudder. From my hand slips the Gandiva bow, and my skin seems on fire now. My mind and head are spinning round, impossible it is for me to even stand ground. Even all the signs that I observe, O oh Krishna, they seem so adverse. I see absolutely no fame or pride in killing anyone on either side. O oh Krishna, I desire not a victory, nor the comforts of a territory. Any kingdom or lordship acquired in this way, would it not be a waste? What else of it can I say? For my dearest ones, whose very sake, these kingly comforts I desire. With their lives and wealth at stake, they stand here in the line of fire. My teachers, brothers and my children, nephews, in-laws and grandchildren, my elders and likewise grandfathers and many other family members. O oh Krishna, to kill them I desire not. Such a crime in life I have never sought. Not for ruling the three realms of earth. Surely, is such a lordship any worth? O oh Krishna, by killing Dhritarashtra's sons, what happiness is there for me to gain? I will only suffer for my sins with pain, for murdering these impetuous ones. O oh Krishna, it doesn't seem fit. What satisfaction will I thus merit? Waging war against them, what can I win? For I shall then be killing my own kin. Even if they don't in this way perceive or see, However corrupt their greedy minds may be, the worst of sins is incurred from this felony that is acquired from the carnage of friends and family. Why shouldn't I think in this manner to escape from a sin I wish not to incur? For this terrible sin of killing one's own, to us its consequences are already known. The act of killing of one's own clan destroys our ancient ethical code for man and when the ethics of man get annihilated in his posterity the sin gets proliferated and O Krishna in a household that is sinned the women members only suffering you find and when the women are afflicted the balance of society gets affected in the lives of such sinners only hell descends and in their families too it extends, even those who received the libations and rise. The ancestors fall in stature even after their demise. These sinners and destroyers of families bring forth to the society loss and tragedies. By destroying the ancient code of the human race, they break families and spread disgrace. Those whose code of duty is vanquished the fates of such men are sealed and finished. They are doomed for eternity to dwell 
and suffer for their actions in the reams of hell. How did we agree to commit this sin? Just for the kingly comforts we desired to win? Our own clan did we seek to kill. Alas, this terrible feat, why did we will? If I faced their armies unarmed and by caravan weapons I get killed, I would still retain some glory by allowing them to claim a victory. Sanjay spoke. After saying so, Arjuna, amidst the war field, his bow and arrows he refused to wield. He dropped down onto his chariot's seat. In delusion, he had already accepted defeat. Thus ended the first canto of the Bhagavad Gita, where Arjuna confessed his grief to Shri Krishna after having decided to abstain from participating in the mighty battle of Kurukshetra of Kurukshetra.